Welcome to Made in Science, the official podcast of the University of Stuttgart. My name is Wolfgang Holtkamp. I am Senior Advisor on International Affairs and your host today. In this episode, we welcome Dr. Rama Krishna Aluru. He is a graduate from our English-speaking master's program Physics, with a special focus on condensed matter and materials physics. Before he came to Stuttgart, he had already acquired a master's in physics from Banadras Hindu University in India. After his graduation in Stuttgart, he started a collaborative PhD program in experimental solid-state physics. This was a cooperation between the Max Planck Institute for Solid-State Research at the University of Stuttgart and the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. After that, Dr. Aluro worked in the Netherlands at the Leiden Institute of Physics as a postdoc researcher and then went back to India to found two companies. He is co-founder and CIO of EduTechX Global and tries to help Indian pupils to find their way into a passionate career path. With his other enterprise, called Honors Cryogenics, he brings together scientists to produce cryogenic products. Now we are looking forward to hearing about Dr. Aluro's motivation to help people find passionate careers, his own ambition as a scientist, and why passion for science and education are an inevitable part in creating innovation and wealth in a society. Hello, Ram. How are you today? Uh, I'm great, Wolfgang. Thank you for having me here today. Ram, as we just heard, there are two hearts beating in your chest. One is for science and one for young people trying to find out what career path they want to choose. Can you tell us about these two fields you are working in? Uh, uh, sure. Uh, so coming Uh, to the two startups I have co-founded. Uh, so firstly, I will uh, talk about EduTechX. So the reason why I co-founded this company is because uh, of the exposure I had uh, studying in India, then going to Germany, uh, you know, living there, working there, and then moving to uh, Scotland and then Netherlands and traveling across the world. And During this whole journey, uh, what I have realized is, you know, there is always uh, a scientific uh, path towards wealth creation. And uh, even the history of Germany itself, you know, how the country was uh, rebuilt after the World War and how uh, the brightest mind, uh, you know, put their time and effort to create innovative policies and create wealth, uh, how that has been accomplished, uh, I think, uh, That definitely had a you know great uh, impact on me, and coming from a country like India, where uh, you know it's it's a developing country, and still there is a lot of difference between haves and have-nots, and still people are you know aspiring uh, for greater careers and to create wealth. Uh, I felt there is a very important need you know for them, especially the young population. To make them realize the importance of, uh, uh, you know, passion, education, innovation, and wealth creation, because uh, everyone wants to create wealth in life, but you know, uh, most of the times it's easy to get carried away uh, the pattern in creating wealth, and so that's the motivating factor for us to uh, create uh, Edutech X, where. Uh, we primarily work with uh, young students as early as uh, sixth grade onwards uh, to help them discover their uh, passion. And uh, for this, we follow a very uh, scientific approach. We start with psychometric analysis and try to understand their personality characteristics and then try to map them with the right careers, right courses, right universities, and even also the right countries for education. And then we strongly take this notion because when people choose their career path on their passion, uh, the, the most important thing is they won't complain for the rest of their life. And uh, uh, there is a high probability that, uh, you know, uh, innovative products and companies 
and a sustainable path towards uh, our wealth creation uh, can be made. And coming to the second part of my question, uh, for me, uh, the motivation as a scientist, and I think uh, if I remember my uh, college days, I fell in love with uh, physics during my high school. So from that point of time, uh, uh, I always was inspired by uh, Robert Frost, uh, The Road Not Taken. Uh, say it's a poem in English literature. And so the, the poem talks about uh, there are two roads diverging into woods. Uh, the one road is uh, traveled by most, whereas one road uh, has not been traveled. I took the road less traveled and it made all the difference. So for me, uh, I can always relate it to myself, you know, how I chose a career in physics and how it kind of changed my trajectory in life. And that also shaped my personality because being in science, it also helped me to uh, think myself as a global citizen, like a cosmopolitan. I think because uh, being in physics, I was always reading about uh, physicists all over the world. So uh, at a very early age, I felt that, you know, uh, people around the globe are helping each other unknowingly. Uh, either it's inspiring someone through uh, uh, literature or through some innovations in medicine or STEM or R&D. So in a way, we are connected to each other. So I think uh, even through my R&D contributions at the end of the day, uh, the goal is to uh, give back to the society uh, in some form or the other and uh, make the world a better place through our contributions. Uh, regarding the second part of the question on uh, Onus Cryogenics, uh, so this company uh, has been founded to focus on uh, product building or we, we are focusing on building products such as cryo coolers, uh, which are relevant for the, the defense and space sectors. And since cryogenics is my uh, area of expertise and uh, uh, this expertise came to me during my doctoral studies where the Max Planck Institute, I was working on uh, scanning tunneling microscope. Uh, it's a home-built microscope, which involves uh, a lot of electronics, cryogenics, and imaging. Uh, and on a daily basis, we used to see atoms and electrons. And uh, inspired by that work, uh, in owners, we plan to build microscopic uh, cryocoolers for uh, uh, satellites and uh, missile systems uh, to improve their accuracy and uh, broadcasting of uh, signal signals across the globe. Um, in your opinion, why is it so important to have a passion for what one is doing? We've heard that word a couple of times, the uh, passion and love for science. Why is that so essential? Uh, that's uh, actually uh, uh, a very good question. Thanks for that, uh, Wolfgang, because I think uh, fundamentally, uh, you know, we believe that, you know, uh, every whole human has a potential. Uh, but, you know, at times what happens is uh, depending on the socioeconomic conditions or where you are born, the opportunities are not the same. Uh, but, you know, history has shown us uh, when people persevere and, you know, when they have this never give up attitude, I think they definitely achieved what they want. But in most of the cases, what happens is, you know, people com compromise on a lot of things. And it, especially in a country like India, where, uh, li like I mentioned, the socioeconomic conditions do play a very important role. See, for a young kid, uh, you know, it really depends on whether he is born in a metro city or a small town or a, you know, rural village. So, Uh, first of all, the students even hesitate to dream, dream big, uh, because they think that, you know, maybe the quality education is not for me or the Nobel Prize is not for me or I cannot create cool products. Uh, so that is where they make those early compromises. And in fact, a majority of the students, they don't even realize that uh, there is something called as a potential and passion. So I think in simple terms, uh, I think 
passion when we discover an individual's passion uh, so that brings out the best human potential and when the best human potential uh, comes out uh, we will have wonderful problem solvers you know either it is building products or you know let's say we want to solve some of the uh, you know biggest problems bothering the mankind either it's climate change or it has to do with economy or healthcare education so i think most of the problems bothering the world can be solved by or can be solved through innovation and in order to take that approach uh, it's very important to find passionate people and uh, so we believe that that passion if discovered early you know it can it can do wonders and it's not about just doing wonders in their community and country but uh, you know we feel that it will have a global impact doing these wonders may also require to talk about them um so my next question is how are you trying to connect education and science and communication um to how do you bring all of this together uh yes in fact uh, uh science communication uh is a very in very uh, important aspect uh, in making lay people or young minds uh, understand and dream about careers in science and uh, uh i got this interest in science communication uh during my days at the max planck institute in stuttgart and also during my stay at the st andrews uh, university where we used to conduct uh, or take part in uh outreach activities uh for school students telling them about the cool science experiments you know how nature behaves uh, you know when you go from a microscopic level to a macroscopic level uh, for example playing with uh, liquid nitrogen liquid helium and uh, the, the way the mother nature unravels uh, its beauties uh when we don't stop looking through different lenses different approaches and when i came back you know to india and interacting with schools and students i felt there is a you know long gap between these things where because most of the innovative stuff are happening elsewhere in the world and they are just sold uh, in india so most of the time students are not able to get the flavor of uh, uh innovation and uh, product building and even when it comes to you know nobel prize or nobel laureates right so when i was working at the max planck we had the privilege of uh you know interacting with uh, uh von klitzing who is a nobel laureate uh, uh you know he won the nobel prize for quantum hall effect and seeing him on a daily basis talking about uh, his research has always inspired us whereas uh, here in india we don't get the opportunity quite often and that is why we have taken the approach of uh, you know uh, simplifying complex science topics and taking them uh, to the school students and college students and tell them how a small r&d innovation has you know uh, created a billion dollar industry for example a simple prototype like of a transistor has created in a huge billion dollar industry which never existed and uh, we also uh, do a lot of outreach in the form of science cafes uh, organizing science camps science tours uh, encouraging uh, the establishment of science parks and science museums in the schools here so it's a ongoing activity uh, we are trying to implement when it comes to india what role does innovation play in the country in in reality innovation uh, should play an a very important role uh, but uh, personally i feel uh, still innovation in education is uh, lagging behind by a great distance for example um, again you know when i connect my experience uh, of research and education one of the main reasons why uh, we started edutechx is because uh, the early guidance or early navigation uh, can make a you know great uh, change but when it comes to education 
or educational curriculum in India, I think not all the curriculums are research oriented, which means they are not uh, uh, updated on an annual basis or, uh, you know, a lot of new things are not being integrated. So that is uh, uh, one area we are trying to work with the governments, for example, And recently, in the year 2020, uh, the Indian government has come up with a new education policy uh, through which they want to encourage and inculcate uh, interdisciplinary uh, studies or research activities where, you know, science students can also take subjects from arts uh, domain or the vice versa. So uh, it's still in very early stages. I think the target is 2030. Uh, to get this implemented. So uh, in our company, uh, we put a portfolio where we closely work with the federal and state governments uh, to, I think, to have realistic strategies, uh, uh, you know, in implementing the uh, innovation policy, because that is where we are highlighting the importance of having uh, incubators for startups at a very early age. Uh, even for high, high school students and uh, trying them to understand the importance of patents and intellectual property and how, again, that is connected to the uh, wealth creation. Even at our university, we see that uh, the Indian government is implementing also a new policy on in internationalization, reaching out to uh, a more um, coherent cooperation between the uh, international partners in, ac in the academic field, uh, but for instance, by developing degrees uh, together and with the certainly means of our technological world today, uh, that should become much easier. So uh, the signs sound all or look all very, very good. This may also then lead us to the next question. In the current education uh, and also career choosing, what role do gender roles play in India? And uh, are you also trying to navigate that in your approaches? Uh, yes, I think uh, uh, this is a very uh, important topic, uh, not only in the, the global context, but also in the Indian context. Uh, because, uh, again, because of the cultural factors, uh, uh, so most of the women across uh, the country I think uh, historically, traditionally, uh, they have been uh, deprived of, uh, you know, equal opportunities as men would get. Uh, but the trend has been changing over the last uh, few decades uh, in terms of, uh, you know, women coming into higher education and into the uh, job sector. Uh, but still, uh, we feel that... Uh, you know, gap in terms of women getting into STEM careers, for example, uh, that is an area where uh, we, we are working very actively to encourage women in taking up, uh, you know, the so-called, you know, more, uh, you know, challenging or uh, uh, I would say research oriented, uh, you know, careers. Uh, for example, traditionally, there is this notion, uh, at least in the southern part of India that, you know, uh, when someone is going for engineering, uh, you know, families have this concept that, you know, they should go, women should go for like softer degrees such as computer science or, uh, you know, or degrees where, you know, there is heavy machinery involved, you know, they're kind of disgraced to take up those kind of uh, careers or degrees. Uh, but that is something we, we are still uh, trying to address where, you know, we, we always take global examples of women who are actually pursued careers in STEM fields, for example. Uh, either you take space careers or uh, medicine or uh, research areas and uh, how they have, you know, impacted uh, uh, their world, you know, whichever country they were living, how they have impacted. So it's always uh, a kind of, uh, we start with the, you know, data and inspiring them. And after inspiring them, we always have a realistic roadmap because uh, most of them have not only uh, the aspirational issues, but also financial issues. So uh, proper support has to be provided them to realize their goals, even at a very, very, uh, you know, uh, level such as a high school and college, because Unless they cross that barrier, it's very difficult for them uh, to come to the university level. Ram, 
Can you tell us how you made it to college and why you chose to study physics? Uh, yes, I think uh, that's also a very uh, life-changing moment uh, for me, uh, choosing physics as a career. Uh, it all started uh, when I was in high school where, uh, you know, most of my friends were preparing for uh, uh, entrance exams to get into Uh, engineering degrees uh, because anyone uh, uh, who studied in India, you know, they, they know like, you know, uh, how uh, the competition to get into the IITs is and there are, you know, millions of students taking these exams and they start this early preparation as early as 10th grade onwards. So I was also put, put in such a college for preparation and so that's when, you know, I was looking at everyone who were very much tensed to prepare and get a rank to get into the premier institutions. And uh, I was asking, uh, instead of, you know, getting immersed in that kind of preparation, I was asking myself, uh, you know, what my passion is, you know, what is the, you know, thing I enjoy the most. And then it stuck me that, you know, during my physics lectures, you know, Uh, after every lecture, you know, I, I started that visualization. And at that early age, I never, I never even realized, you know, how important visualization is uh, for any individual. Uh, for example, even if it's about uh, E equal to MC square, the Einstein theory of relativity, how we can convert mass into energy. Uh, I was, I think, awestruck by those kind of concepts where I was trying to visualize and uh, uh, when I read about the history, how the, uh, how this, you know, simple equation has been used to uh, assemble an atomic bomb, uh, which is in the so-called famous Manhattan Project. And in a way, that is what has actually stopped the world war uh, in spite of all its terrible consequences. So, uh, I was deeply, uh, you know, thinking about, you know, how a small concept can actually result in such a, you know, huge, uh, uh, you know, consequences. And then that is when, you know, I, I was uh, thinking about the road not taken, you know, why can't I uh, pursue my career in physics? Uh, then my decision was, uh, you know, considered as a shock and surprise to a lot of people where they started saying that, you know, uh, you know, why are you putting your career at risk uh, without pursuing an engineering degree and all these kind of things. But I think, uh, I think that is the moment I'm really proud of myself in the entire life uh, so far, because I think that is when I stood for myself without knowing the, the impact of it. Uh, and yeah, I think that changed everything. And I think even till today, I, I, I enjoy physics in the same way as I was a, you know, a college student. And then not only that, after you had acquired uh, then a master's degree in physics in India, you decided to go abroad and do another master's at the University of Stuttgart. So you even, you know, added something uh, to uh, uh, your career path. How did you end up in Stuttgart? Yeah, that was a, you know, a really uh, uh, interesting moment because um, I think after my master's, my plan was to uh, go to the United States, uh, you know, to pursue my PhD. And during the preparation process, uh, I, I was just discussing with my professor at Banaras Hindu University. And uh, he spent a few years in Dresden at the Max Planck Institute. And he's aware that, you know, I'm really passionate about uh, condensed matter physics. And we were discussing about uh, the research uh, facilities and infrastructure at the top Ivy League universities in the U.S. Uh, that is when he, he said, you know, uh, why don't you try going to uh, the Max Planck Institute in Stuttgart, uh, you know, where they have great, uh, you know, facilities and the whole scientist community are from condensed matter. You will have a great, uh, you know, experience there. And uh, he actually suggested me to uh, apply directly for a PhD program. Whereas uh, I didn't choose that option just because 
uh, I want to come to Germany and I wanted to have the options to choose, you know, among the best because uh, studying physics in India, uh, the approach is more theoretical uh, because, uh, you know, because of the lack of uh, sophisticated infrastructure, then I was thinking more of a, as a theoretical physicist, uh, something like uh, Paul Dirac or Richard Feynman kind of thing. Uh, but I thought, okay, if I give myself one more year, I go to Germany and I can uh, experience both the experimental and theoretical side and then I can decide uh, what I want. Actually, that paid off uh, uh, pretty well because when I came to Germany and then uh, while studying at the University of Stuttgart, I got a heavy job at the Max Planck Institute uh, in in one research group and that's uh, that turned out to be an experimental group and uh, so i think it really helped me to pay all my bills uh, during the studies and not only that that's when i got uh, attracted also interested in the experimental side of physics and i continued my master thesis in the same group and that also continued for my uh, phd as well so i ended up staying in that group for almost uh, I think, uh, four and a half to five years. And then in total, in, you spent about eight years in Europe. And before going back to, to your home country, how did that time influence you? And was it always your plan to uh, go back to India? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, even before I, I, I came to Europe for my studies, the plan was always, uh, you know, to go back and contribute uh, in some form or the other. And I think this became even uh, even more stronger uh, during my master's and doctoral studies. And during my travel time in Europe, uh, so we visited, uh, you know, IBM in Zurich, uh, and the Bombardier uh, plant also in the Switzerland. And uh, again, uh, I, I, I think even till today, I am amazed, uh, uh, you know, by the kind of results you get when things are structured, right? Even you take the German education system, how uh, the schooling, college, university, and the Max Planck, uh, and... Uh, the other uh, industries are aligned with each other and you know that is how you can get the best out of it and even uh, when i go through the history also how there was competition between the european countries and between north america in terms of technology uh, i'm not saying you know technology uh, would uh, would give the best results in every area of life but at least what people would consider uh, as fate you know at least most of such things you know technology can address uh, when it comes to healthcare basic infrastructure or having a better education system i think most of these issues uh, you know can be resolved uh, when you can create wealth and uh, when people have that determination to solve it so with the summation of all these things you know i i just wanted to you know go back and you know contribute in some form or the other because always I considered myself as a global citizen, but I always want to be connected to the world. Uh, but making a difference locally, I think uh, that's always important. And even I think most of the Max Planck directors in Germany, for example, I mean, they went to US and uh, I think if they want, they would have just settled there, you know, they had all the facilities, but most of them, they came back and uh, built wonderful research institutes. I'm sure that is equally true in, in the other, see other areas of industry and education as well. So I think uh, that all inspired me to go back. Ram, with your enterprise, Honest Cryogenics, you have a unique position in India. What is your goal for the future with that company? Yes, cryogenics uh, is, is a very uh, exciting enterprise, and uh, uh, especially for owners. So we have a you know four-year roadmap uh, from now. So where uh, in the next four years uh, we want to uh, focus on uh, you know macroscopic to microscopic uh, cryocoolers, building of those cryocoolers. 
And our competitors are very handful of uh, global uh, MNC companies, uh, some companies based in UK, Germany, and in uh, France. So for us, it, it's, I mean, so far we've been, uh, you know, dreamers, but now it's time for execution. So build this, uh, you know, cool products in rugged conditions, you know, because these products uh, which we aim to build, so they'll be going out into space and they have to uh, work continuously for, you know, five years or 10 years or even 15 years. So the, the goal is to push those limits and uh, maybe these will play a very important role uh, in having better weather forecasting models or, you know, better remote sensing of calamities or, you know, how the climate change is happening. And the other part I'm really excited about is, you know, space-based internet. You know, I think there are startups which are working on this where, uh, you know, you need not worry about your mobile towers or, you know, land connections. You know, the space-based internet uh, is going to have a, you know, bigger impact in the coming years. So that's where uh, we feel that, you know, uh, the products we are going to build, the cryo coolers uh, will enable uh, very economical and uh, energy efficient uh, cryogenic system, not only for the government uh, and uh, research sectors, but also for the startups, uh, you know, uh, coming out uh, in the space and defense industry. What would you advise people to do in order to find out what career to choose. It's actually, there are two parts, uh, two answers, or uh, two directions of answers for this question, because see, as I, uh, you know, interact with young kids, you know, uh, definitely uh, people are passionate about random things. And now, it's very important for educators to validate whether it's a you know logical uh, passion or illogical passion in the sense what i meant by that is uh, uh, because throughout the world i think the educational landscape is changing dynamically you know because i think the careers which are relevant 10 years back may not be relevant in 10 years from now and uh, i think there's a lot of automation coming up in you know, many industries, either uh, you take in edtech itself, you know, people are working in AI tools, having an AI-based teacher. We are, we are talking about self-driving cars. Uh, we are talking about platforms, you know, for example, Google Maps, you know, uh, 20 years back, you know, you want to go from one place to other. People were asking each other the direction. But nowadays, we don't even ask anyone. We, we, we trust Google Maps. So uh, in this kind of a context, uh, it's, yes, people should still follow their instinct and gut feeling when it comes to careers, but it's very important to get it validated. I mean, that should be validated uh, through data. Uh, and people have to be open about, you know, or flexible about some minor changes, right? You know, uh, let's say uh, someone who is, uh, because this morning I spoke with a, you know, ninth grade student who is interested in literature, but she's worried about, you know, if I do literature, if I build my career in literature, uh, can I be successful or can I make enough money? So that's when I, I was talking about, you know, you know, people who are into literature also can work with corporates. Or you write a book. If your book is sold in millions, you can also make money apart from satisfaction and all. So definitely a lot of parameters has to be considered. And that is where I think... Uh, we as a company also want to evolve as a, a product driven company because again uh, we want to have an impact on every individual throughout the world uh, whether the student is in india or germany or north america because uh, every individual is unique and i feel like beautiful things can happen uh, when we help people to realize their passion and navigate to the right uh, careers and that is where we are also working on forecasting models. You know, for example, if a 10th grade student, uh, you know, wants to understand, you know, what are the relevant careers in five years from now, 10 years from now. So just like uh, a prediction happens in a stock market or a weather forecasting model. So if EduTech kicks, if we can interact with the industry 
uh, academia and give a forecast, you know, which careers are going to be relevant, which are not going to be relevant. So at least pe- kids can dream in the right direction, you know, or else if they're thinking about something which is completely obsolete, probably uh, they may enjoy what they are doing, but they may not make enough money out of it. So we want to actually distinguish between uh, uh, developing passion as a career and as a hobby. So because we, we really want to be a committed to make a difference in their life. So uh, so in summary, one has to be uh, flexible to some extent, uh, you know, to do if they want to decide uh, or make their passion as a career. And how does that work for yourself? How does that work for Ram? Um, you talked about looking at the facts. Uh, that's always important. Um, now, looking at your facts, and that you, you focus on education and your focus on science that we heard about, where do you see yourself in the future? In science, in education, somewhere entirely different? Uh, what do you think? Which road will it be that will be taken that you that you see upcoming? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, see, I see myself uh, evolving all the time, you know. See, that's what I, I say to myself, like, Uh, see, every morning when you wake up, wake up, you have to uh, welcome surprises. And it's all about how you align with the surprises, but at the same time with your vision. And actually, th- this actually comes back to a, a, a question I asked as a uh, you know school student to a lot of scientists in India. See, I was, I was trying to ask them, you know, Uh, what is the main reason why India was not able to produce a lot of Nobel laureates? I mean, not, not that Nobel laureate is a kind of a metric uh, of something, but at least, you know, uh, Nobel laureates inspire millions of kids around the world. Uh, but when you see the statistics, and I think uh, from India, we have produced very less number. Then uh, one scientist answered me that uh, India has produced wonderful scientists, but Uh, uh, we never produced uh, good scientific managers. And that is one thing I noticed in Stuttgart at the Max Planck Institute where uh, I think when I see the directors of Max Planck groups where they run 80 people or 100 people in their groups, uh, they manage everything and they also manage a wonderful uh, institute, a global institute which attracts the best talent. So I think I see myself evolving as a, a more of a you know manager in terms of facilitating an environment where wonderful things can happen, because I think I'm a strong believer of organizational culture. So uh, it's not like you build, they will come. You have to build and also make it attractive. You know, you have to put that cultural DNA where, you know, People anywhere from the world should be able to come and contribute. You know, we need people who solve those wonderful problems to make the world a better place. So I, I think even I'm equally excited, uh, you know, about the future, you know, what what roles uh, it would bring to me. Thank you very much, Ram. Towards the end of our conversation, we have um, a moment seven. That is, uh, we will ask you some questions that we would like you to Uh, answer as shortly as possible. Moment number one. Spätzle or Maultaschen? Uh, I think Spätzle. Moment number two. One thing you could change and would like to change about the world. I think uh, probably, I think it, it may be a fantasy, but a world without, uh, you know, boundaries or nationalities would be great, I think. Moment number three. Do you have a book recommendation for us? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, from a, a scientific uh, point of view, Uh, there is a book by Richard Feynman, Surely Are You Joking Feynman. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful book, uh, not only for a science enthusiasts, but also for lay people, you know, bringing the fun part of science. Moment number four. 
the best advice you have ever received was? I think take, taking responsibility for our decisions, you know, I think once we made the decision, that's it. I think uh, we have to take the complete responsibility for it. Moment number five, the favorite place on the campus here at our university. For, for me, I think, uh, uh, see, I, I loved uh, staying in the student apartments there. So uh, I think in that zone and I, I, I loved walking from the student and work to the Max Planck Institute to the forest. Uh, so I think, yeah, those, the road I was walking always reminded me about the road not taken and uh, that the thoughts always were lingering, you know, how I made these decisions in life and how I ended up in Stuttgart. Moment number six. If I could start all over again, I would do the following differently. I think I would do everything exactly the same because uh, if one thing changed, everything else will change. So I would do it everything the same. Moment seven. Complete the following sentence, please. The best thing about Stuttgart is... I, I think uh, it, it has this, uh, you know, it's a multicultural society, I would say. I mean, meeting people from different parts of the world and the the automobile connection definitely you know, how it all started, and that's an inspiration. Thank you, Ram, for this very engaging talk today. We are very much looking forward to staying in touch and wish you all the best of luck with everything you do and on every road that will be taken by you in the future. And to our audience, thank you for listening. Please feel free to subscribe to our podcast and also to rate it. Most of all, stay tuned for our conversations about what's made in science.